Hey guys, I recently ran into this article about a person in Japan selling their Yu-Gi-Oh collection. It's a Yu-Gi-Oh slash anime co collection slash figure. So he's trying to get a million dollars, a million two hundred sixty-one thousand yen, which comes out to a hundred and thirty thousand dollars, and I believe his collection is actually worth that amount. So that got me into thinking about how much money have I spent on magic throughout the years. And I'm going to do simple calculations and just give, you know, average of what I believe I spent a year. I first played magic in beta. I don't know if if how many packs I bought, but I do remember my first pack with the dragon whelp which I believe was the rare card. I, actually, I didn't know that there were rares, uncommons, and commons. I, obviously, you know the lands are no good, but the rest of the cards, it wasn't specified. That, there was no way to indicate it unless you bought a magazine, and that was in the past where people didn't really have internet, uh, definitely not cell phone internet, but even on computers, our first computer was an IBM. It was like It was very expensive to buy that IBM, I remember like Mech Warriors was the, oh, the video game that came with it, and that was really great. But no, I didn't really use the internet for magic cards. I just used the internet for Mech Warriors. So, and, and back in that day, you didn't really care about the prices. I would assume I didn't spend that much money. In high school, I spent a ton of money. Most of my allowance went to buying magic sets, which... Uh, ranged anywhere from Onslaught. Uh, Onslaught was probably middle school, eighth grade. I remember buying boxes of Onslaught and pulling these fetch lands. Like, what are these? These lands suck. And as a new, and my friend's collection, my friend Matt's collection in middle school got stolen. And we're talking about, at that time, multiple Gaius Kratos, multiple Taylor. He had pretty much a full set of Urza Saga, which back then was just whatever people had in their trade binders. Today, it is, you know, quite valuable. One of the most valuable cards we were we had back in the day was Squee Goblin Naboo. That was a pricey card, and I remember like trading like how much I did trade for a place of those. And I'd also play the Avatar deck with Belb's Portal. That was the deck of choice where I would call the avatars, and then I would have four of each, and that was twenty avatars, four Belb's Portals, and then just land. Terrible deck, but really fun. So in middle school and high school, I probably spent close to $10 a week, maybe on F M as well as a few packs. So let's say, let's just say 40 weeks, $400. $400 times seven would give you $2,800. In college, I had a lot more money to spend because student loans, you know, <laughs> when you go to college, you don't realize that what student loans are. Obviously, it has loans in their name, but it just kind of seems like free money, which it's not. I recently paid off all my student loans in college and law school, but it was very painful and not something that... Uh, it's very painful paying interest, but that's another story for a different channel. So in college i spent a lot of money on magic cards but i was also like breaking even so what was happening was i would spend money and then i would make sure i could break even from the collection and then i get, just got to keep whatever extra cards i had so in college i had a very very nice collection uh, which extended to law school and which extended to today uh, and the collection has just been growing and growing growing now do i have stacks of blue eyes white dragons no i don't but I have stacks of Falias, Maleras, uh, Stoneforge Mystic. I'm slowly building that up. I sold 40 of them to Strike Zone Online after C spiked. And that was probably my biggest regret was I should have kept that collection and made a, um, a piece of artwork with them. What I do is I go to Michael's. Michael's has a sporting department. I know it sounds really weird, right? But they have this department for frames for sporting material. And one of them is like baseball cards. And it costs about $40 a frame. But sometimes you can get it for like $30 on discount. The, the things on Michael's are always on discount. The only reason I go to Michael's is to figure out if I can get more of these baseball ca card frames. And on Amazon, they're actually more expensive than $40. So Michael's is what I... Especially if you want to decorate 
your entire home with them or your entire office. So what I do is I go ahead, I try, they come in, I think it's five by five. So you, what I try to do is I get 25 copies of the same card. Then I put the 25 copies in sleeves. Then I put them in the hard case. So the Michael's version actually comes with the hard cases that you need, uh, which is nice because not every version does. And then I put them together and then I throw it up in one of my rooms. And they're interchangeable because they're pretty much the same. And that's what I do with my collection. Now that got me into thinking how much is my collection worth? That being said, I did sell slash trade many of them of the dual lands, of the higher end stuff. I've never kept Power 9. I had a Black Lotus, a heavy play Black Lotus five years ago, uh, still in second year of law school when I was interning in Richmond. A friend sold me his entire collection and that included a heavy played Black Lotus. I immediately tried to get rid of it and I was able to get rid of it for a decent price at the time, mainly store credit. Uh, I got a lot of store credit, which then I used to buy the Commander decks, the original Commander 2013 Commander decks, which was very, very good. I, I sort of got, I sort of doubled down on Kalia, but I got one of each, which is okay. But how big did my collection get? I think what happened was my collection could not ac actually be that big. This guy is selling his collection because he lives in Japan. Japan is all about space. In Texas, my home is pretty big and I have a lot more space. So I have a gut feeling my collection is going to grow a ton. Uh, minus the significant other. The significant other actually has an apartment. So she lives in Houston. And we hang out when we're in Houston. I'll hang out with her in her apartment. But uh, she does store a lot of like crap here. Like uh, like storage facility almost. But I have a lot of room. I have a free car garage. The home is rather large. So I have a gut feeling that what is what's going to happen is my collection will just expand. Because I get... I have a lot of stores call me or they actually just typically text me about collections they want me to go half 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 on and the reason this is the case i explained in a previous video but if you are a bigger buyer in houston and you know some of the store owners if a person with a collection of let's say five thousand dollars comes a store owner and a store owner is like okay i really want this collection but i don't want to put this much money into it because I'm a store owner and maybe I don't have this much money or maybe I just don't want this in liquid magic assets. I would rather have it in new comic books or new anime toys. So the store owner will call me or text me and say, hey, this is what I have. Can you come down sometime? You know, when, I'll, when are you available? Can you come down sometime? Yada, yada. Uh, most pe people sell collections on Saturdays and Sundays, so I can just come down straight away. I normally would take a look at the collection and then we'll make a really fair offer. It's always better than Star City buy list because it should be, right? Uh, in my opinion. So we'll make a fair offer and I'll go half on the, the set. Now, the reason the store will do that for me uh, is because they don't want that. They don't want that person to take that $5,000 set to the store down the road. The two stores I'm talking about, they are down the road from each other. You can walk there in five minutes. And if you are not, if one store cannot afford to buy it, then that puts the other, that puts that store at risk for having that collection go directly to a competitor. And that's true for a few stores in Houston where I do get, I do get some, inf I, I would say I get one or two texts a month for a collection over $1,500. And I don't really even, I typically have not purchased them. I'm having some issues with my dog and the medical bills are kind of high. But given the fact that I now own a home and the home is super large and I have a lot of storage now and a free car garage, I only really, I, since I put my significant other parks outside because she is... She needs to get to work really early and then obviously she doesn't live here all the time so it makes sense for her to park outside so I can take, we can take her car to go to places. But I am parked in one space so there is actually two parking 
out of the free card garage, two of those places can I'm storing Magic Card slash Google merchandise. I get a ton of Google merchandise. I don't know why they keep sending me the same stuff. Um, actually, I asked them for pet stuff, and now I got some pet stuff, which is kind of cool. I got a pet bowl. I got some pet mats. I got you know a pet toy. I got four pet frisbees, which are like smaller, and my dog doesn't actually like it. But back to my point. I have a gut feeling my collection is going to expand a ton, and it's already massive. And this is a not an issue in Texas because land is cheap, homes per square feet are extremely inexpensive. I, I got a home in a very good neighborhood, very safe. There's police, you know, parked outside the neighborhood all the time, but like for safe, like it's safe. It's near an elementary school. It's not like super near elementary school, but it's in one of those areas where there's a lot of police because it's an elementary school. It's a beautiful home and I am now, I have no lack of storage. One of the problems with the storage facility is you pay them per month, which is okay. It's like $69 a month for a air conditioned storage facility, uh, which is, I forget how big it is. I want to say it's like the size of one of my rooms in my home, but now I have lots of rooms in my home and so my significant other we live we just we use the bedroom and then we use the i have she has a study room upstairs i have a study room downstairs and we have a library in the downstairs as well in the living room but outside that i can imagine me just storing stuff it's already got pretty bad with the anime figures anime missouri as well as i think delta age cons coming up and uh, Retro Palooza would just passed. Each of these conventions I'll go to and be like, I'm not going to buy anything. I'm not going to buy anything. And I end up with like so much crap that like I have to go home early. Well, I have to go home to, I have to go to the car and I have to like put the stuff in the car multiple times in a day because I buy so much stuff. I don't know. It's very addicting. It's not just magic cards. Magic cards, of course, are very addicting, especially when you can get them at a very good price. Even when you can get the buy list, it's hard for me to be like, oh, okay, I don't want that. In the past, I've been very good because of the storage issue and the fact that I could I could literally fit nothing else in storage uh, safely. So obviously, you can stack them on top of each other, but I was like, huh, like, you know, the boxes got kind of wobbly and some of the boosted boxes that I have in my home, like you could tell too much stuff was stacked on top of them because then they broke. So I was a little concerned about that. And now everything is moved from storage. I'm no longer paying the $70 storage fee. Thank God for that. And so not only has that freed up $70, which every month is a lot, it's also allowed me to access these cards more frequently which is good and bad the good is now I, if i want to look for oh hey do i have this predict uh, and i have lots of predicts which has gone up to four dollars i can easily pull out the predicts and say oh cool i can also buy lots of bulk now and bulk is extremely cheap and for me it's always treated me well because i'm not the type of person to look for every single cent I just want their predicts. I want 40 predicts, right? At $4 a piece, that's $160 of predicts and the bulk. So I can buy $100 of bulk if I get the 40 predicts and the rest of it is just whatever to me. It goes to storage. And that's why the storage is so large. But now that issue with my home is solved. So I hope I do not become this guy, but I have a feeling that unless my sniffing other takes she doesn't watch these videos, by the way. Unless he takes drastic action, I feel like my house would just be flooded with magic cards, which might sound like amazing to you guys, but then one day I have this Zelda collection. So 10 years from now, you're going to see my collection for $100,000, and it's going to be massive. It'll probably be even bigger than this collection. Anyway, those are my opinions. I just kind of blawed because I saw this collection and just reminded me of my storage situation has changed and now I'm getting like before I would get a text to buy like a bulk collection. I'm like, no, no. But now like I'm approaching the store owners to say, Hey, do you guys hear anything? You know, I'm here for you guys. <laughs> and, uh, yes, bulk storage. 
Anyway, bye guys.